paroxysm inside our cell is considered to be a recycle center of the cell. Now, if we imagine cell to be a big factory, then the recycling hub is the paroxysm. And there are key aspects of recycling taking place in the paroxysm. Most notably, the fatty acid oxidation, especially the long chain fatty acid and branched fatty acids, D amino acids, and even sometimes of polyamines are getting oxidized in the paroxysm. And the whole uh, plethora of tasks that these paroxysm takes uh, place is done by the enzymes inside the paroxysomes and paroxysome has a huge variety of oxidase enzymes it also has catalase now oxidase can attach or oxidize uh, a group and create a hydrogen peroxide now catalase are other set of enzymes which can degrade hydrogen peroxide because hydrogen peroxide is harmful for the cell it's a reactive oxygen species to water and uh, oxygen so catalase oxidase and many other uh, uh, peroxisomal proteins need to be delivered to the peroxisome peroxisome don't have their own protein production machinery like mitochondria so all the genes that uh, are actually uh, coding for the paroxysomal enzymes are nuclear genes. So definitely the paroxysomal enzymes are transcribed in the nucleus and then they are translated into the ER. So paroxysomal enzymes are transcribed into the nucleus, translated into the ER and from there they are going to be delivered to the paroxysome. So this video is all about how this delivery mechanism works. So one question we should first ask that how paroxysomal enzymes are selectively delivered to paroxysome not to any other places and the answer is quite simple just like we have seen in case of mitochondria there is a mitochondrial localization signal which would drive the transport of the protein to mitochondria and not any place else paroxysome uh, destined proteins also have the paroxysomal translocation signal or pts most of the cases it has a PTS1 signal which is basically serine, leucine, uh, serine, lysine and leucine but some of the cases they also have a PTS2 signal which is very uncommon. Now the mitochondrial protein transport is a bit different from paroxysomal protein transport because in mitochondria the proteins that need to be transported need to be bound to chaperones and maintained in an unfolded state and then delivered to the mitochondria. In comparison to that, the paroxysomal proteins, let's say catalase, which is an important paroxysomal protein, can be transported to paroxysome in its native situation, even the cofactors att attached. So the heme group of the uh, paroxysomal catalase is attached while it is transported. Now, how do you know that uh, this particular sequence that is driving the protein into mitochondria or paroxysome is necessary and sufficient for this delivery mechanism. So let's say you have a protein which is actually having a mitochondrial localization signal. So since it has a mitochondrial localization signal, it would normally be delivered to mitochondria. But let's say you do a thought experiment where you cleave the signal and put a lysosome, uh, put a paroxysomal uh, translocation signal into that then what would happen scientists have observed in with experiments that this protein is now delivered to paroxysome instead of mitochondria so these signals are super important more specific in, in uh, experiments have shown that when scientists use a cytosolic gfp which is normally present in the cytosol and it would glow like this under a fluorescence microscope now when they take the cytosolic gfp and attach a paroxysomal translocation signal to it instead of staying in the cytosol the cytosolic gfp is now transported to the paroxysomes so now you can see speckles inside the cells which are like gfp positive so basically now the paroxysomes are highlighted in gfp that means the cytosolic gfp has been now transported to the paroxysomes so that tells us this particular c terminal sequence or uh, paroxysome target sequence is efficient to transport the pro paroxysome protein to the paroxysomes. Now let's just 
talk about this process in bit more detail so here is our protein of interest let's say a oxidase enzyme that need to be transported into the peroxisome and on the surface of the peroxisome there would be a pex family of translocons now point to be noted that this peroxisome the protein that need to be delivered to the peroxisome should have the peroxisomal target sequence and this peroxisomal target sequence can bind to peroxidom, peroxisomal target sequence receptor or PTSR normally it is also known as PEX5 so what would happen is that this the, the overall the basics of it is like this PTSR would take it to the PEX family translocon and it would interact with PEX family translocon and allow the protein to be channeled inside the peroxisome but this process is a bit difficult and let's just talk about it in a little bit more details so the translocon complex the pex translocon complex is actually made up of four components pex2 pex10 which is the main translocon channel pex12 and pex14 so basically the ptsr or the pex5 binds to pex14 along with the protein that need to be translocated inside the uh, in, inside the peroxisome now the whole pex14 and pex5 complex along with the protein that need to be translocated mobilize get mobilized to the translocon channel complex then the protein with the pts sequence gets into the pex10 translocon channel and the PTSR or PEX5 gets dissociated and it can be used for another cycle of protein, trans, uh, protein uh, targeting to the PEX14. And that is how the protein, which is important for peroxisomal normal physiology, gets inside the peroxisome. Now, if these translocon channels are not proper, there could be several mutations in the translocon channel. It has been seen that. Uh, there are multiple genetic disorders of these translocon channel give rise to severe problems in terms of physiology so these protein translocation into the peroxisome is also a very important process i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe